everyone and welcome to the writer's class. Let's just make this a writer's class. Okay, Why sure. Not? So I'm going to go with it because you know what? It's cool. And I'm tired of fighting for the beginning. Really? No, that's our whole shtick. I know what it is. I was, I was you lying. You just be like, I'm tired of doing my job. I said, I wasn't even joking. I was straight up lying. I was just like, <laughs> you know how you have to lie and wait sometimes? You have to be like, let the person get comfortable in their lane and then just snatch it right from them. <laughs> If I'm understanding this correctly, you let me get comfortable in my lane yes. and then just snatch the road out. Yeah, just snatch you said, the road right from under you. The no, road, will no, no. I feel, I feel like that's a lot. That's a lot to get accomplished. But I understand time. that I would gravel it back so you wouldn't oh, go okay. off the road. Of that's course, I'm your best you. friend. I wouldn't, you. wouldn't leave you out so there I'm by going yourself. So I'm driving on blacktop to driving on stone. Okay. Oh nice yeah, stone. absolutely. Pack your all wheel drive. Oh, yes, I would have to. Yes. Let's move on because I'm a little stupid right now. Yes. How are you just going to you just gonna announce that you're tired? Like, I'm Jay, though. I can't even with Wilnona today. I can't. Like, how should you look like, I'm tired. You can't say that. <laughs> oh, Wilnona, I just came in from the sauna. It was warm out there. Oh. Moving oh, on. My. We have yeah, you're waking we me up for sure. We, we are literary life guides with pop poetry. I, I can't even. Well, no, no, I just, like, <laughs> you just sucked all the energy out the room. It's gone now. And I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy. And if only I were me, then soon coming out audiobook. All of them are available on Audible, though. And we're just going to throw All of them are available as audiobooks. Oh, one of them is not said- available on Audible? Yeah, one of them is not. Oh, okay. So, sure. One of them is not available on Audible. See? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. I'm not even gonna well, no, see keep this, going. This keep is what going. happens when you mess up the, the <laughs> we have one more book that we she do like gravel on the road, y'all. I'm just saying. Oh, your own book. And I um, thought I did my journey alone. Top four out of the 17. Yes, right? and let's just talk about the 25 hottest indie authors, artists, and advocate magazine coming out soon. Y'all, seriously. It's coming out soon. It's so amazing. Like I didn't know. We're probably, I don't know if we're going to top, we're even going to top last year, you which is so like, hard. which is like amazing because last year was, okay, first of all, last year had COVID and everything, but the magazine last year was amazing. So 2021 is topping that one. Yeah. It's amazing. It, like, that's really it's, good. It's and amazing. it's smaller. And you can check out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com or if you want to, you can check out the abbreviated version at www.andithoughtlady.com. All right, but y'all aren't here to hear about us and like what we have going on because we don't have that much going on. You're here to hear from my wonderful guest. <laughs> wonderful guest? Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm going to take that from you. Thank okay, you. there you go. Hi. Well, I'm Suzanne Greco Mataboni, and I'm really glad to be on here with you, uh, ladies. You're definitely waking, waking me up. <laughs> Can't be tired talking to you girls. This is good. <laughs> and uh, I'm an uh, author, blogger, podcaster you know, a uh, long list of, of things. So, uh, um, so it's, uh, you know, great to be able to do all these different things together um, and be able to, uh, you know, come on and, uh, you know, talk about life and writing and craft and, you know, more, like sometimes more I want to talk about the, the fun things, the things that make us want to write as opposed to just, you know, the books and that kind of thing. So, um, so that's kind of why I liked your podcast. You sound like you have a good time. <laughs> Well, we oh, do we try have to have time. a good time. I mean, why do it if you're not having a I good mean, time? We have unless, you're, unless you're exercising because it's good for your health. You just, just go ahead and do it. Like, mm-hmm. not a good time. No one likes it. We all do it. <laughs> yeah, you like it when you're done, though. It just, yeah, yeah, you love stress it release. It's true. <laughs> it's true. But, like, when you're putting on those yoga pants and you're putting on those shoes, you're just like, why am I doing this? Uh, and then, yeah. And then, like, two weeks later, you're like, oh, oh, I know why I'm doing this. I know why I'm doing this. And then you have that whole fight all over. So um, she didn't say at the beginning. Every once in a while, we just fall down a rabbit hole. And I was oh like, yeah, <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, wait, are we going down the rabbit no, hole? No, we're exercise? not. Which, we're, okay, we're cool. about to talk it's about just a pot hole. The conversation. Yeah. We're going to talk about okay. how to wear so many hats and do it so well. I mean, y'all, y'all okay. should check out her her website. Like, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're talking my website? Yeah, your <laughs> website is really? amazing. I look at- Excellent. Glad you like it. Right? And, and you wear so many hats, but you wear them well. How do you, oh, thanks. Do How do you balance all of the different things that you do in a day? Well, you know, I think that's like the challenge of my life was that like I wanted to do so many freaking things with my life that 
it's like, I mean, you're never going to have enough time to do them all as a thing. So it just got to kind of work till you're ready to drop. Is the thing. <laughs> it's just, like, just like do whatever you love doing until like you can't stand up anymore. That's kind of it. And that and, you know, life is long. I'm older than I want to admit to be. So I've been doing a lot of this stuff for a long time. So uh, in fact, like I kind of felt like, all right, I'm a fiction writer. Um, I went to school for fiction writing, you know, I have a degree, all that, but yet I took a turn and I kind of did the corporate thing for the longest time because, you know, it paid the bills. And because as I was kind of going through my life, I was saying, all right, so I do PR, I do some journalism and I sing and I do this and I do that. I got to pick the one that pans out and actually people actually pay me. <laughs> so for a while that was corporate and, you know, that went really well, but you know, then you kind of get to realize, well, there was that novel or two that I wanted to write, you know, so you got to kind of come back to it. And the thing is, you know, we all know this industry is just like rejection after rejection after rejection. And, you know, for somebody who did theater, this is even worse. I mean, I thought people, t- <laughs> people tell you, yeah, go ahead. Sir. <laughs> what about co-host Tanya's Hodge, which I should mm-hmm. totally check out her IMDb because, you know, it helps some mm-hmm. people. But she said the reason that she decided that she could be an actress was because she was a writer and all the rejection she got. She said, well, being an actress yeah, can be, be worse, than this. worse than this. It's true. It's true. Right. I had no idea it was going to be as brutal as it is. And this is for something that, you know, I wanted to do my whole life. I thought I was good at my whole life, you know, and then you're out there in the world trying to get things published. And it's just like door slamming, door slamming, no matter what. And you come to like you have to commune, you have to, you know, we have to talk to each other and be in associations, like, you know, like pen writers and that kind of thing, because otherwise you think it's just you. <laughs> think it's just you. And it's not, it's, it's everybody. It's everybody. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's rough out there. Like one of the authors that I met and I was like, I love your books, but oh, no. I slightly hate your like journey. Yeah. <laughs> but I love you. Camilla, Camilla Camilla Monk, Monk, like I love her, right? She's the best. But she literally had a, a publishing house. Like the first query she sent out was like, yes, please and thank you. Oh, I and don't know. A deal off of that. I'm almost having trouble believing that that's possible. <laughs> no, she literally did. I love her books. Don't get me wrong. She's like one of the okay. one of my top five favorite people in the whole world. But mm-hmm. when she tells that story, I'm like, I'm a slightly. Yeah, but I get that. But I think like that's like a freak of nature happening. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. And that's what she says all the time. She's like, it's, it doesn't happen. Like, I don't know how it happened, but it happened. Yeah. And I mean, I've been publishing stuff for a long time, you know, going way back to when I was a teenager. But, you know, the thing is, when you're going through your life and, you know, then you're you're getting married, you're having kids, you're doing fun stuff, you're getting a lot of like rewarding things out of your, your life. You know, do you really want to go and put yourself up for all this rejection? It's really hard to go down that road when you have kind of a nice life where things are panning out. So I kind of had to just like take myself off of that track and say, all right, I got to do this now. It's almost like a bucket list thing. Not that I'm really at the point in my life where I'm, you know, kicking any buckets anywhere, but you know what I mean? You got to kind of, you really have to have to want to do this because it's hard, you know? So you have to want it. Yeah. Yeah, I have to want it. Yeah. Like Christine Mayo, when she came on, she was talking about that. Do you, Mm. I, I submitted all of these years to, to this um, writing competition and every year, nothing. And she's like, and then finally one year, they were like, we love this book. She was like, like 12 years it. later, that's what happened. <laughs> I mean, I mean, she's like, and you know, you put your heart and soul into it and you're thinking, how can I handle another rejection? So how do you handle another rejection? Um, I, I just kind of ignore them. You know, you kind of, this is like, you press the button, you send something to a contest, you kind of like, nah, kiss it up to God, bye. <laughs> Like, I'm not even going to think about it. And of course, you know, I have a whole spreadsheet with like seven years worth of stuff that I've been, you know, working on since I decided to get back into uh, more more of the fiction. Um, But you kind of just have to forget it and just put them out there. And and that's just, it's a game of odds. No, it's kind of like you throw spaghetti at the wall and like some of it will stick, most of it falls off. That's kind of the way I look at this whole thing. You know, that's how I look at rejections. How about- That is a nice- (laughs) <laughs> that's a nice way to you do spaghetti at the oh, one like, noodle is gonna stick yep. that's yep. true that's and that's what you got to do but you know none yeah. of it's gonna stick if you don't throw it all it's the thing yeah. <laughs> so um, i want to know did how have your 
talents and being able being a fiction writer, being able to do essays, bloggers, and, and podcaster. I hope they complimented each other through your in a PR. And oh, PR. I'm coming back for PR. <laughs> oh yeah, PR. Well, let's see. Like I said, it was just kind of where the road went and I had to just say goodbye to some other things and, you know, follow some things up. They compliment each other a lot. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes people are like, well, what did you get out of, you know, I used to like act and jump around and, and do improv and stuff. I swear there is no better training. I think for anything, for presentations, for this, for, for podcasting, for any of this, than you know, doing acting and doing um, uh, improv, because you really learn to, to, talk on your feet and just like whatever's in your head is coming out. <laughs> and like, sometimes I overshare, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm like, you know, TMI lady, but you know, you just gotta, you gotta put up with that a little bit, but those things kind of dovetail together. And as far as the fiction and the, and the PR and such, I don't know. I have to keep that a little bit compartmentalized. Like I'm still wondering if I'm going to opt to do like a pen name for this novel that's coming out which is, I didn't say at the beginning, um, uh, Touchpoint Press, Once in a Lifetime, uh, women's fiction set in the 80s, it's cool, fun stuff. But I don't know, do I want my clients in PR to, you know, to pick it up and read it? I'm not sure yet. So, you know, it dovetails to a certain degree because I can definitely, you know, people like the fact that I'm interviewing them and then I'm, I'm writing stuff up and I'm making them sound real good. And I can still get their voice because I'm a fiction writer, you know, I'm real big on voice. Mm -hmm. So that I use that a lot and people, people like it. They like that they sound like them, but that I really got what they're saying and I'm making them, you know, they're making a lot of sense. So, you know, so, so I do try to kind of cross pollinate with the different aspects of my writing. So. I have a follow up question. Because you did too. Fine. <laughs> Fine. You, you're going to be able to remember your, your question? Well, I just wanted to know um, how much of an edge being a PR agent does that give you on the average author? Because a lot of people, there goes, I don't have two, I have one. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, that's how it goes. Finish the question. Um, like, how does it give you an edge? Because I know that a lot of authors, we, we make the mistake of hitting, hitting print and publish and then going, oh yeah, I need to market this. I need to do PR for this. Hmm. I I think it's it's I think it's gonna give me an edge. I think that I haven't had enough. Like I've been doing a lot of short stories and 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 such and and you know blogs here and there. Um, that's not really the kind of stuff. Like you market it via social media, but it's not like I'm gonna send out a press release because I had a short story. Um, I send out maybe one or two about things that I've done. The novel, I think it's gonna be a whole different deal. I think I'm gonna be able to reach out there. Uh, you know, um, I have a database of tons of journalists. And and one thing is I know how to pitch a story and I do it for everybody else. And I'm kind of, you know, I've been doing it for a long time. So I'm kind of good at it now. So I know how to, I know how to pitch the story. It's how I'm going to pitch it and make it sound like I'm not self aggrandizing, you know, like I'm, like I'm not, you know, self evangelizing quite so much because I'm not as comfortable doing it for myself as I am for other people, of course, because, you know, it's weird. <laughs> And that's what we all have to learn to do. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> no, it is. It's a little weird. <laughs> so what was the other question? Oh, so I now have two part questions. I know you do. Okay. Right. 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 When I you were it. talking. Oh, well, like, you got to catch up. Yeah. And the two part <laughs> question is back. Yeah. So the first one is, I meant, you had mentioned before, like uh, having an a assistance and the support from like Ken writers has helped. So I, first I want to know Absolutely. what Ken writers and the second, how does it help? And then the second question. Wait, wait, you said second already. So the third. You said you were is it the third? Yes. Is it attached to my question? Because the part C to the question. Part C. Okay. So like part C okay. to the question is now I forgot to just answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it'll come back to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> no, if you leave the room and you come back, maybe it'll come back. That's, yeah, what that's, that's, that's how it goes. That's how it yeah. goes. Yeah. Or it'll be like 2.30 <laughs> in the morning. Oh, I remember. Yeah, now I remember. I do remember. Oh, you remember? Good. Hey, I'm saying it. What's your podcast? Yes. Yes. Ah, good. okay. Well, it's not just my podcast. Well, I'll do that one first. Then we'll come back to Penn Writers. And let's remember mm -hmm. that's the one we were going to do. Um, okay. So I've been working with Bonsai Retro Club. It's B-A-N-Z-A-I, retroclub.com. Now that, that podcast is like 70s, 80s, 90s. 
you know, music, commercials, TV, movies. It's a lot of fun. Um, I just kind of ran across one of them on Twitter and because we were, you know, kind of, kind of talking about like, I don't know what it was at first, like maybe like cartoon shows from like the seventies or something. So they asked me to come on and we had a lot of fun. And so now, now I do that, you know, every other week. Uh, I started off doing a whole series with them on new wave music because that's relative to the novel, you know, the eighties novel um, that's coming out because they're, you know, she's an artist slash kind of, you know, uh, music uh, aficionado, let's say, um, and it has kind of like a punk and new wave type of edge. Uh, yes, and like I can't wait to read this novel, right? I'm like, oh, I'm good. Buy it. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Uh, I'm still editing, but it's <laughs> but uh, I'm thinking uh, we don't have a date yet. But I'm thinking either late this year or I might even I'd be just happy to have it be like spring of next year when COVID is like bye bye. We don't have to worry about that anymore. That and it's a summer book. It's about a summer you know, between college uh, semesters, let's say, between college years. Of June, though, like when COVID is gone. Like, yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice. I'd like to go, you know, like go to the New York Book Fair and like maybe like do like 80s karaoke at the booth or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see marketing, you know, <laughs> we'll see if they let me do that. <laughs> um, okay, and you had asked about pen writers and about like a support community. And yeah, I I have to be honest, but oh, well, Pen Writers is a, a group of writers throughout Pennsylvania. So uh, this big group uh, 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 in Pittsburgh, then there's a bunch of us out near the Philadelphia area. So I'm the rep for that area, Philadelphia and the Lehigh Valley. Um, and uh, yeah, it's you can find critique partners and such so that you have somebody to actually bounce things off of. Like, I don't know if I would have stuck with this whatsoever if it were not for critique partners and writing buddies. And in fact, when I mentioned like it had to be like pulled off of the track of your regular life and endure all this, you know, rejection and such. I did that mostly because a friend of mine from college, she went and wrote a novel and came to me and said, you have to do, you have to get back into this with me. You know, you have to do this with me. She wouldn't do it without me. <laughs> so she kind of forced me. So, well, uh, you know, then. <laughs> Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, buddies, you know. To write. She was, she was never going to write. And then I was like, if you're going to make me write, you better write something. Yeah, there you go. See, I can't give up now because <laughs> she doesn't let me stop. But, you know, so we started getting together and making pen writers like kind of an excuse to because she's in Pittsburgh. I'm in, I'm in uh, you know, like I said, north of Philadelphia. We're on, we're on different ends of the state. We always have been. Um, and I went to college in Pittsburgh, so that's where we uh, we started hanging around. But at we at least have excuse. We just went, after a while we're like, well, maybe we could just be conference groupies and just go to conferences <laughs> over and over. It doesn't matter which one, you know. It's just an excuse for us to get together and have people, you know, have our you know families not feel like we were uh, kind of surreptitiously just leaving them. <laughs> okay, so I guess when we, we promote this, we're gonna like not promote it to your family. <laughs> you know, they won't know your secrets. Okay. Like I said, I always I always reveal far too much. I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I do too. No but, one's listening. But, but, but feel feel better because what I revealed was ridiculous, and it happened to be one of our very few celeb interviews. And I just was like, and my da 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 da, da and, and Jay looks at me and goes, "Wow, you should never." Wow, that was too much. <laughs> yeah, but I love those kind of interviews, and I kind of feel like that's what makes life interesting. Is those like weird little intimate things that you know <laughs> you just can't keep under the under the table. So, um, does does pen writers have like speakers that come in, and how does it, how do they keep you motivated? Uh, yeah, well, we do have we have a conference every year. You know, we've been going back and forth. As last year had we had to do very many kind of uh, uh, virtual Zoom. And we're trying to do something bigger this year, you know. So we're we're organizing all of that. But um, the in-person conferences ha have been great. It's there. Um, there are a lot of pretty kind of successful people. I was really amazed. That's why I love the group. Like recently, like did you see? Um, maybe not because it's a YA thing. But Netflix had the Nola Holmes movie recently. Mm -hmm. Nancy Springer mm -hmm. is is a, a pen writer. So she's she's not in my area. She's in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, and if you saw like V Wars a couple of uh, like last year, I think like last September, that is Jonathan Mayberry. And he's a pen writer. He's now he lives in California because, you know, he's making movies. So what the heck? He was from Doylestown. He's from out here near Philadelphia. So 
I've been kind of really blown away by some of the talent that's in this organization. And when you get them together and the, you know, the, the really more experienced people are here sharing their experience with, uh, you know, with everybody else, you know, even people who are just starting out and have never published a thing. It's, um, it's an amazing dynamic, you know, and you need that. You need to know that it's possible because it, it is, it's difficult. It's difficult, but you need to know you can absolutely get that. Totally. Right. So where can people find out more about you and your books? Okay, really what we're asking is where can people see the cool website? I know that's really good. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, well, you can go to uh, SuzanneMataboni.com and it's S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-M-A-T-T-A-B-O-N-I. I'm assuming you can see it down here. I'm not sure, you know, how the, the uh, everything's going to be broadcast, but the spelling it should be in the on the... <laughs> on the screen if not utilize that right there yeah. that, that, there you go i love right. it that's pr right that's there marketing. that's that marketing that's that yeah it's true it's true and i've only I've, I've learned to get around zoom more because of pr because we've had to do interviews that way now you have to do meetings that way you want to talk to anybody you have to do this um i've been working from home for like 20 years almost so wow. i'm kind of helping people through this <laughs> yeah you know yeah. And I've been trying to, uh, like one of my <laughs> posts recently was, you know, people at the beginning of this pandemic were kind of saying, I don't know what time it is anymore. I don't know what time of day it is. I didn't get into the shower until five o'clock. I've been kind of like, see, you people have been making fun of me yep. <laughs> all this time. Now, now you real. know, now you and know now what it's like. Yeah. Now it's real because absolutely uh-huh. when this pandemic started, we were both, we were both like, okay, y'all. So we're, we're just going to continue with Zoom. <laughs> and like, but now it's nice because you don't have to get this, long form letter to talk about what zoom is and how you can download it now everyone's like okay everybody knows yeah (laughs) like id number it's beautiful it's beautiful i I was oh it was like the best thing like in week two where i was just like link password id number and the person's like got it and i was like there's no question no questions it's been so (laughs) beautiful all that and um it was it was nice having our office like because we had just redid our office and so now it's just, yeah, it's really sweet to have. Yes. So when the pandemic started, Good. we had just redid our office. We finished it the week before and, and we were just sitting here like, yes. And everybody else was like, we're going to work from home. We don't have an office. I was like, yeah, but you can't use mine. So figure it out. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's rough because I have one, I have one client. They're, they're probably, they're my largest client. They had just moved into, a, like they rebuilt a new headquarters for like 600 people in October of 2019. By March, they had to move everybody out. And it's just, it, the, the irony is just spectacular. But they are, they were a technology company. So they were able to do that like like crazy. They turned that around so fast, it was ridiculous. Um, so I feel bad for companies who then were like, I, what do I do? I don't know how to do that. But yeah, so many people had to go through that. Like, okay, now this is my office, you know? You see newscasters and they're, you know, like in their living room and they <laughs> Pictures of like the kids up on the you know on the yeah. shelf. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, so you gotta give us uh, the website again. You have to give us the website yeah. one okay. more time so people will remember. Okay, www.suzannemataboni.com. S u z a n n e m a t t a b o n i. Okay, or if you want to look at uh, listen to the podcast, uh, Bonsai Retro Club is B a n d a i r e t r. O C L U B spelling in my head without writing it down. That's that's scary. <laughs> but it's bonsai. <laughs> as long as you got the B-A-N-Z-A-I, I think you'll find it. <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to, to, to being on today. We really appreciate you stopping by the writer's oh, class. Thanks so much. Last like woman's case. Yes, yes. Jade, would you like to wrap us up? Absolutely. You can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. While you're there, take a moment. Go mm-hmm. on the homepage and see the Ladies Tale podcast where we have a great number of wonderful guests and also where professional mm-hmm. actors read Will Known a script. Yeah, I had to pause there because Winona was giving me like this evil eye. Because she wasn't going to say we're professional actors. No, I was not. I was, I was going to say it. I was going to oh, say Oh, you it. were? Okay. And I'm writing yes. episode four. So if you hear the first three episodes, know that episode four is coming It's up. coming. All right. So, and then more importantly, all of that, please go to the ladies tab, go down to the middle and see the charity that we probably support. Maybe you can support them too. And if you want all of this abbreviated, where do you, you go? go to www.andithoughtladies.com. Jade, back to you. Absolutely. You can see 
Yeah, what was I gonna say? You wisdom is all around, around you. you. If <laughs> you're open to finding it and accepting it, so peace and love, you guys. I'm Will Nona and we, Jade. We really shouldn't do Saturday podcast. We shouldn't. Bye bye. Oh yeah, thank you.